Hi, my name's Dan Keane. I'm a composer, producer and musician based in London. No, really, I just moved here. It's very exciting. A little while ago, I reviewed Fracture Sound's Woodchester Upright, a film I subtitled Authenticity is King. What I loved about this piano was how bold it was. Three dynamic layers, two round robins. It was so intentional. It didn't try to do everything, but it nailed a specific aesthetic that was at its core. Well, anyway, a short while after that video was posted, Fracture Sounds emailed me asking if I wanted to try out their Midnight Grand a piano with a similar sonic fingerprint, but applied on a grand scale to a grand piano, a Steinway Model D. Now going into this, I did have some trepidations about how it would feel under the hand. I think for upright pianos, there's a preconceived intimacy there that goes hand in hand with this softly recorded approach. Maybe it was recorded in a small, dry acoustic environment, recorded closely. It sounds intimate, it's maybe in a quiet, private space. It draws you in, and above everything, it's emotive, which is why I think it goes really well with film music. But your typical grand pianos are often branded as immense and thunderous, recorded in huge churches, halls, or your larger recording studios. While there are some key differences, of course, between an upright or a grand piano, it's the room that really contributes to the sound. It becomes a giant sounding board. To avoid sounding too big, Midnight Grand lacks the ambience that you might expect from typical concert grands. It feels close, intimate, like the Woodchester. So while a grand piano can indeed sound huge up close, you really feel the weight of it when paired with a distant room microphone. I think every piano has a different kind of sweet spot, and for the Woodchester, it was this kind of middle C and just above register. For the Midnight Grand, because it's so much bigger, it's a little lower than that. Midnight Grand has been prepared with a layer of felt between the hammers and the strings, so it doesn't really sound like any other concert grounds you might normally play. But because of this felt, it does slightly deaden the sound, but as a result of this huge soundboard, the notes tend to resonate for far longer than they would on the Woodchester, which has a much smaller soundboard. I also find that the felt slightly attenuates the sound, which I don't particularly mind, but you lose that kind of 2K bitey, nutty edge, and instead you get this brighter upper edge sheen of the felt actually kind of brushing against the strings. Now the Midnight Grand was recorded with a little bit more detail than the Woodchester and if we have a look in here you can see we've got four dynamic layers and if we go to the group editor we can see we've also got four groups of round robins here. With all the kind of basic settings, the factory settings built in here, I'm just going to start playing and see what it sounds like. And in a similar way to the Woodchester, we've also got these layers that we can build in here. So after the notes have decayed, we start to get these synthy elements. And these are slightly different to the Woodchester, so you get a nice vibe. If I just play you the raw samples on their own. And I mentioned that the low frequencies are the ones that really kind of ring out. But it also sounds really lovely up in the kind of top mid-range as well. If I turn off the reverb as well. So as I mentioned, a really close, close sound. Now in a very similar way to the Woodchester, we've got the same controls here. We've got a room tone which starts to introduce some of the character of the room. So it's not just the pianist making noises, it's, you know, little movements here and there in the room, which is quite nice. We've got our pedal noises, of course. 
which do sound different on a grand piano. You can hear the weight of all those hammers, the dampers being lifted. And then of course we've got our key releases as well. If we wanted a much more kind of intimate sound. And as before, we've also got our color. So if we turn this up to 50, we get a very bright sound. And if we turn it down, we get a more kind of intimate sound. Stereo width is a nice control here. We can bring it down to mono with minus 50. And then if we turn it up, we get a much broader sound, which we slightly lose some of the middle range. So it's something to be careful of. I personally prefer it on zero. It has a much more kind of natural sound. Now our atmosphere intensity here, this refers to sort of how vibrant the additional pads are. And if I just mute these raw elements, I'm gonna show you what the haze sounds like on its own. It's a wonderful sound, this one. And this is the shivers. So it's a very delicate sound. It sort of sounds like there's a bit of a reverse in there, which I really like, but it kind of, it's very gentle. You know, it accompanies these samples really gently. And finally, this is the eclipse. So you'll notice even when I play in the low registers, I'm still getting a relatively bright sound out of these samples. So it sort of helps to accompany the raw samples. If I turn this down. It's a much kind of deadened sound. Now it is possible to adjust this using the modulation wheel here. So we're able to actually automate a little bit. which helps just to give a little bit more control over the sound. So would I recommend this piano? Well, I think it's a bit of a gentle giant. It's sort of, it, it sounds huge, but it's very, very tame. It's very playable. Um, and, you know, would I recommend you buy it? Well, if you want a stylized sound, 
I think it checks that box. If you want to steer into the zeitgeist and get what people are really hoping for at the moment, which is this soft sound that goes so well with drama, but also in the kind of the pop setting of things, you know, I hear this being used on quite a lot of more kind of contemporary music that doesn't typically call for classical music. I think in a similar way to my King's Upright Piano, which I'll link down below uh, on Piano Book, there's something nice about taking piano samples and then combining them with a pad after the fact. So you're getting this sort of extension of the chords. And I think in this hybrid context, it works particularly well. Now, on that note, I'm actually going to make a video in the next few weeks uh, talking about how to combine this piano or maybe another piano by Fracture Sounds with some of their other tuned percussion. Um, I'm not kind of affiliated with Fracture Sounds, but they did send me this piano for free and they have sent me some other products as well to play with. So uh, take that for what it's worth. But this isn't a biased review or anything. This is just me kind of talking about things that I like. Um, now, speaking of things that I like, I like discounts. And I'm sure you do too. Now, this piano and others are currently discounted on FractureSounds.com as part of the Black Friday deals. So if you're interested in grabbing this, then do get it while it's on discount at prices that you won't find during the rest of the year. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't done already. And I'll see you in the next one.